Sincerely, sincerely, I'm here to recover from all the love I suffered on my birthday during um, the week. Even though a certain John boy tried to mess my day for me. But you all know that the cure to disappointment is not having expectations at all. Yes, and indeed, I had none for John Boy and his team of boys on my birthday. But besides John Boy, I know many are itching to hear more of the strongly medicated tolo beef. First of all, you all know I don't rap, right? Also, my sports sense is as good as my math sense. I'm that good, so don't try. Besides these upbeat news stories, that should make any satirical show like Backpage fun to watch. There are some serious bread and butter issues like increasing water bills and a pastor caught up in a seeming am I chop chop scenario with the investment of his members. Also, there are life changing opportunities I'm excited to share with you when we have time and deeply, deeply worrying stories that require sober reflections for any concerned citizen, not forgetting the war against indiscipline and some near bloody attacks on the police despite progress made. As always, I have that singular honor to present to you the week's news on its head on what we call Backpage here on City TV with the best week boy, Caleb Kuda. Guess what? I have a gift for you all and that will come all the way at the tail end. So stay with me, I stay with you. Welcome back everyone, welcome one and all. And from a very warm feet, thanks to warm their feet, and a warm heart, I am really glad to come your way again. Thanks for all the love as always. Let's start this way. So while producing the City Breakfast Show this week, I saw something on City TV that I thought you deserve to see too. But upon second thought, I mean, I have changed my mind. Actually, my colleague, Pius Amihe Duku, he filed a report on consumer rights issues bothering on aviation industry. I saw the Kotoka International Airport inscription on our dear airport. The second K in the Kotoka was not there. Sounded like Kotoa. But I'm told that is an old video and that it doesn't represent the current situation and that that video itself was a mistake. That shouldn't have been uh, there. So it's been rectified. So sorry to the Kotoa authorities. Yeah. I couldn't tell help but admire the aviation minister's dapper look in that particular report. When he was at the sanitation ministry, you know, I said, nah, bola, no, <laughs> killing me softly. <laughs> but now, dear Charlie, James Bond, crowd funny home. But Honorable Joseph Kofi Ada, in another report filed by my colleague Jessica Ayako Ai, gave me the impression, said, Ada, you kumpo na kwada. I run the airport in terms of uh, utility, particular uh, electricity, it's quite exorbitant. Uh, I think for the Civil Aviation Authority alone, which is really a small part of the airport operations, we're paying over 2 million cities a month for electricity. And for a smaller airport like Tamale Airport, we're paying nearly 80,000 cities a month for electricity. Certainly, if you can get some collaborative ventures uh, developed, Perhaps through a PPP or uh, below printing transfer arrangements or whatever. Wait, basically we are spending two million cities a month on utility at the airport. Wait, okay, so <laughs> Honorable Joseph Kofiada invited the press because he had the commissioner, the high commissioner of India to Ghana with him. And the agenda was to practically beg for a way to pay the bill of Ghana's airport, whether through solar or PPP or whatever. You heard him. Well, that's not all. We wish the Indian government can help us build gutters, sorry, drains at the airport. Apparently, the flooding of Terminal 3, you know, is not good for our image. We've had some unpleasant experience of uh, a bit of flooding at uh, the, the, the airport because of the way the construction was done. We're working on that. Uh, it's going to be 
redesigned and modified very soon so that the flood will cease. But the reason why I brought it up is that we've had the experience of working with one of your major companies, Wapcos, uh, which uh, developed the 30-year strategic plan for uh, water sanitation sewage systems for the Greater Accra area. And they have approached us, they're offering to, to be part of us in looking at the designing of the uh, airports uh, for the purpose of handling flood and uh, sewage systems and, and waste treatment and all of that. Well, the High Commissioner of India to Ghana, Birinda Singh Hadav, I hope I got it right, he gave a very diplomatic response. Let's decode it together after listening and watching him. The areas which you have mentioned, uh, I think we would be very happy to uh, have a look into these areas. And I'll request if the uh, Chief Director could write to us formally, and especially in the areas of training, so that we can explore if uh, spatial training a uh, module could be organized for uh, the Ministry of Civil Aviation and the relevant institutions. Oh no, the man is an astute diplomat. He literally said, look here, Minister, put your request in writing and stop this word of mouth business. Write to us formally. We are serious people. Oh my God, this is so cool. Diplomacy, wow. Now I think I can be a diplomat the way I will make people comfortable in <laughs> Germany. Meanwhile, Ghana, no, we are not broke like that, okay? We are not broke. In its 2018 special audits carried on some selected state institutions, the Auditor General's report shows the, that the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, for example, itself, right, made payments totaling 192,400 Ghana cities. It described as honorarium, catches, and protocols, special and sitting allowances to all the members and supporting staff of Parliamentary Select Committee on Trade, Industry, and Tourism, Finance, and Women's Caucus in Parliament. But they were unable to substantiate the payments. Catches, protocols, special and sitting allowances. Nice vehicles to feed our elephants sitting on our small Uber car, right? While some of you rush to Kantaman to adorn for first selection, just so you don't blow all your salary on two Prima initiates, clothing allowance amounted to 38,000 Ghana cities, 187,500, more than 38,000 Ghana cities, was undeservedly paid to the former ES, I sure that is Executive Secretary of the GIPA, Honorable Gifty Clenham, and two former Deputy ESs for the period like June 20, 2018 to uh, 31st December 2018. June 2018 to December 2018. Even though the President had relieved them of their duties on 7th June 2018. We are told Gifty Clenham refunded her portion but the balance, no, balance, no, the balance of about 23,000 Ghana cities received by her deputies, Eric Amakuchum and uh, Akilu Seibu or something, is yet to be recovered from them. In fact, the report says a total of more than 54,000 Ghana cities was wrongly paid to Mr. Eric Chum Amwaku, a former Deputy Executive Secretary, in respect of soft finish. I don't take so I don't take madness. I don't take far. I don't take so far, millions. I can't take far now, Becca. Soft finishing for the elephant. What can I say we they play? <laughs> more than 54,000 Ghana cities for soft finishing. Now, someone who asked Caleb, what is soft finishing? Well, according to the Elephant Man Dictionary, soft finishing are those components of the house that provide beauty. You know, they beautify the interior and provide a pleasant atmosphere in the house of the elephant. Now, tell me, every day you are bragging, I'm a citizen, not a spectator. 
proud taxpayer, responsible citizen. But do you? I mean, you can't even afford stop, stop, this is stop furnishing, soft furnishing. And 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 then go here. Two years advance, Kakrebi, that you paid, you are almost dying. While your taxes are furnishing the tax eating elephant. We, we all deserve this soft furnishing some more. The best part of the story is that, according to the Auditor General's report, I should be crying. I don't know why I'm laughing. According to the Auditor General's report, Mr. Eric Chum Amwaku, macho my appointee, the, the payment of more than 54,000 Ghana CDs for soft furnishing was done after he had already been paid rent allowance advance of 60,000 US dollars. Well, no, <laughs> for a two year period instead of a fully furnished accommodation. So, I mean, it took 60, $600,000, you know, 60,000, right, for an accommodation that was not fully. A, a, instead of a fully a, so what you are saying do you now understand why when Ghanaians are complaining <laughs> you is okay and because sometimes when you are going Ghanaians are complaining then some of the responses ah you want to soft finish more but they are getting hey meanwhile some young graduates are out there seeking loans to pay rent advance some two have worked for a whole year only to use everything to pay their landlords and their landlordiness. <laughs> and you know, while all ye NAPCO personnel, mortuary workers, and even NADMO directors are asking for either delayed allowances or salaries to be paid promptly or meager ones be increased, a certain Miss Jacqueline Aboni according to the Auditor General's report, who was granted accumulated annual leave but failed to report after the expiration of her leave. No. She was paid an unearned salary totaling 23,000 Ghana cities, 597, uh, 23,597 Ghana cities. <laughs> This place, we make all live now one hour per home bedroom. Meanwhile, farmers are crying for fertilizers, but we hear over fourteen thousand four hundred ninety-seven bags of fertilizers have gone missing. A better way to say it has been stolen. Charlie, let's take a break. You know, I want to go and cry and come because the way things are going. Welcome back to Backpage after that tearful break. See, <laughs> I've been all about very depressing developments. I know it seems I'm bringing you just depressing stuff. Now, one thing you may find refreshing, it is just coming at this time of recording, is that the Supreme Court has given permission to the Attorney General to sell properties of businessman Alfred Woyome to offset a 51 million Ghana CD judgment debt paid illegally to him by the state. Now, let me see your shouting. Let me see your shouting. It looks like some good news right there, right? Absolutely. Let's hope it gets sold. Let's hope the money doesn't go into someone's. Away from your shouting, you know, can you imagine that the Electoral Commission awarded a contract for construction of 100 district offices for more than 15 million US dollars instead of some 2 million US dollars approved by the procurement or public procurement authority, leading to, according to the Auditor General's report, unjustified budget overrun of some 6.8 million US dollars. And so, beside that, the commission paid an amount of some 41.1 million Ghana cities. 40, uh, oh, sorry, 4.1, 4.1 4 
4.1 million Ghana cities for partitioning and to fit out its new head office block as against the budgeted amount of 700 Ghana cities. You know, about 4.1 million, they spent 4.1 million as against what they budgeted for 700 Ghana cities, resulting in, according to the report, an unjustified expenditure of some 3 million Ghana cities. Now relax. Let's not <laughs> relax, because it's not like they are building a whole new head office. So they are just partitioning, like while we're in a single room, self contained and you use curtains. Now they see so that they, and on an unjustified expenditure of 3 million Ghana cities. No, you can imagine the number of schools we could have built, the number of roads we could have constructed. Now, while the Honorable Joseph Kofi Ada is literally begging the Indian government to help pay bills, electricity bills at the airport through solar or PPP or whatever, the waste in the system alone can ensure we don't have to beg for sin. And like by now, we have affordable houses to live in you and, I, and better roads to drive on. Not like this one. My children and my husband refuses to come because of this road. I have changed my tires four times. What is this? How can we come back home and invest in this country with this sort of road? And we have president, we have ministers. It's wrong. It's a shame. It's a shame. I've taken pictures and I'm going to put it on the internet. So everybody will know what Ghanaians are doing in this country. It's a shame. It's a shame, actually. And we don't have just the people you mentioned. We have more, you know, the numbers are huge, you know. And now that your children and your husband don't want to return to Ghana, you want to take their pictures and put them on Facebook, you think they will? <laughs> Look, throughout my stay here at City, I've done about three reports on routes in that area, traveling from Kwabenya, Taxi Rang, to Ketase, you know, there's some estate there joining the Ebri Road itself. Now, if you go to Boyman, Terman, Pantai, Chesanina, Pantai. But still, it's still the same. And the Link Road at Tessi Manet to the Bush Road, you know, so about three reports I've done that. Continuing from my predecessors, guess what? I have handed over to Nia Mama. He's the latest reporter on that road. It's like we are handing over. Before the handing over ceremony, see this. Now, MP Bernard Okoboy there in the thick of the planned demonstration over the state of roads there. Don't forget the... $60,000 two years advance for one man and uh, 54000 for soft finishing. Go ahead, don't forget. Now, speaking of accommodation, this man in Teshi has observed this trend about our leaders. <laughs> Yeah, and while the people of Teshi vent their spleen, some church members are refusing to accept that their pastor has made them a victim of number one flu. And we are not here to destroy or to do anything. We are here that they promised you promises. You have not fulfilled it. God is good, my dear friend. God is good. In times like this, remember, God is good. But you should also remember that if you don't get your money, water bill has increased, and you may not get water to bath. The commission wishes to further announce that it has also approved an 8.01 increase over the July 15, 2018 tariff in water tariffs for the 2019-2020 tariff period, also effective 1st July 2019. Right, so that's just about it. Water has increased, electricity has increased as well. Earlier they told us they had reduced things. Anyway, 
Before we reflect on Black Stars, here is some progress report on the war against indiscipline. Halfway through the operation, things turned dramatic. One of the culprits, who identified himself as Bureau of National Investigations personnel, attempted to escape. He sped off and locked himself up at a friend's house. He was later apprehended by the police. His apprehension led to an altercation after he allegedly attacked the arresting officer. Another culprit, who could not deal with her arrest, called up her husband. The man, who was not happy with the arrest of his wife, allegedly breached the police convoy that had his wife's car in it and forcibly removed the officer who was accompanying the car from the passenger seat. The officer got hurt with his reflector jacket damaged, but the man is currently behind bars at the East Legon Police Command. Anyway, that was on the war against the discipline. So, on my birthday, which was June 25, John Boy, John Boy, he did his worst again, and he's been consistent on it. Well, after this, Ghana's Ghanaians are like, uh, uh, John Boy, do you say, yeah? Uh. You know, actually, that game was a bit shocking to me because I just grabbed a chair and be to watch the show, the, the game. Before I could sit, we had conceived the first goal. I'm like, wait a minute, what is happening? So I just got off, went to hide somewhere. Next thing I hear gold, and I come out and find who scored. That was how I watched the whole game. But Benny Mponi, Benny, Benny Mponi, Benny Mponi, we are hoping that with Cameroon, they don't come and ruin our day and our aspirations of becoming uh, what? CAF champions after how many years? More than 25. Yeah, after more than 25 years, we hope Cameroon will not ruin our dreams of becoming champions in this AFCON games, right? Yeah, anyway, Black Stars, all the best, even though it's not from my heart. Now, I promise you all from the beginning, I had a birthday gift for you all, right? Yes, I've been taking some lessons in kidnapping, and I'm going to teach you all how not to be kidnapped. Now, three things you need to know first of all. There's a difference between kidnapping, human trafficking, and abduction, okay? Now, to be abducted means you are a girl below the age of 18, and you've been abducted by your captor to a secret location so they can purposefully marry you, okay? Now, in the case of human trafficking, that's when you, for example, will sell your family land and say, ah, Ghana is not sweet. So you want to go to UAE somewhere in Dubai and go and work and you realize the work is not even nice. If you're in Ghana, you're chopping your gobe, you'd have been fine. That one is human trafficking. All right. Now, in, ca in, in, in the case of kidnapping, you are forcefully captured by your captor to a secret location where they are demanding ransom from you know, your whoever, okay? Now, to be kidnapped, you need to have kidnapped value, assuming you, your brother is the one who stole the quiz mistress's bag, you have kidnapped value. Because when they kidnap you, it will make news. Brother of quiz mistress's bag stealer has been kidnapped. And everybody will be going help us secretaries, you know, <laughs> to look for you. So we need to have kidnap value. You need to be someone popular, someone who gain attention or traction. But in some cases, we see a bit of differences like little kids who are kidnapped and against national attention. So that is very critical, right? Now, if you're driving home and you find a car following you steadily, get to the roundabout, go around it about two times. If this guy's still chasing you, go to the police station, park the car, sleep there, do something. Now, don't use the same route home all the time. If anybody wants to target you and do you harm, they can always do that. Now, if you're kidnapped and your father is the IGP or your father is a, a chief in the military, do not tell them of that because if you do so, they are going to kill you. I mean, IGP, but yeah, it means the whole state will come chasing the kidnappers and something will happen to them. But if your father is a teacher or your mother is a teacher, quickly tell the kidnappers that, hey, yo, look, my father is a teacher. Come on. The moment you do that, I can assure you the kidnappers are going to return you with lawyer fare because, you know, <laughs> it's not that they think that your parents don't have money. But, you know, kidnappers, teachers generally have this, they command this respect among all the seventies, so that's how they, they're going to help you. Let's just say that is Kidnapping 101 for today. Some other time, when we have time, we could continue that. 
Okay, so that's with the kidnapping story. Also, uh, th that's the, the birthday present I have for all of you. But here is something personal that I had for my friends here, my, my colleagues here. Last week, during the production, I promised the cameraman that on the birthday we were going to have something great to eat, something sumptuous. Everybody was expecting. And then I go out and I return with um, pots of flowers. Can you imagine? And some little art crafts like a bicycle, and people were upset. They're like, what in heaven's name is this? But it turned out quite good. But eventually, some of my colleagues who have made themselves internal auditor generals are asking questions because according to them, they've seen me file a report from a Ebola site, a refuse dump site, that after repeated reports, the place got cleared. And now the place is a garden. It's around Okonglo behind the Ghana Revenue Authority, Green Chase. That's how it call, it's called. Now the place is a garden. And then on my birthday, I turn around and say, hi, ah, guys, I bring you a birthday present, and it is flies. They said they suspect that the thing is sorry. And so I said, I'm coming to ask you, when you look at me from where you sit, do you think this is sorry or not? I mean, may the birthday package has have come for everybody. You people, you are saying sorry. I don't know. So, ah, uh, just in case you don't know sorry. <laughs> if you're in Ghana, you don't know sorry, there, I don't know. Sorry is practically. Hmm. How do I explain to those who don't know who know? So at least, uh, somebody says on the radio, <laughs> that will sound like Auditor General or something. But practically, when journalists attend events and they are giving something for transport, a, ref a, re a refreshment, that is what they call Soli, you are last now. Some journalists demand that out to you, give them their Soli, you know, they won't do their story. Uh -huh, that is... It has this ethical conversation around it. Some say it doesn't influence their stories. Others say it does. Some pretend they won't take, but before you know it, ah, they take that thing already. So that's with it. Do you think that birthday flower gift was a solid or not? You can let me know what you think. But uh, yeah, uh, the day is bright. It's bright and fair. So we are done with back page. We have to go and freshen up and have a good time. Thank you for watching us as always. My name is Caleb. Thank you for making time with us as always. Charlie, I'm going to continue the birthday party on that one.